Hello, everybody. Welcome into another episode of the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I am Ryan Warmly, joined this morning by Bill Enright of Sports Illustrated and also Andrew Erickson. We don't care about him as much. Bill, thank you so much for making the time to join us here this morning. We are talking some week five buy low, sell high wide receivers. And we're going to start as we do every week at the top with the most traded wide receivers. We've got a couple of big names to talk about here. Guys are Moving on or aggressively trying to go get some of these, uh, you know, wide receivers that were going in the second round of some drafts, a lot of drafts for some of these guys in draft season. So let's start with Jalen Waddle is the most traded wide receiver right now. And Bill, I will start with you. Is he a buy, sell or a hold right now? Uh, I'm going to hold on Waddle. I have a lot of faith in this offense and I have a lot of faith in Jalen Waddle's talent. I know he hasn't gotten into the end zone yet. That's a bummer. He has four catches in three games, 16 targets. Tua is one of the most accurate passers in the NFL. 81% of uh, Waddle's targets have been catchable. I think it's only a matter of time before he really starts to click a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit less of Tyreek, a little bit more of Waddle. Maybe one week it's a little bit more Waddle, less of Tyreek. We're definitely going to have those weeks where it's all of Tyreek and, and not a lot of Waddle. Uh, but I, I, I have, again, a lot of faith in this offense and a lot of faith in Jalen Waddle's talent. And he's a guy that I, I just want on my fantasy teams because I think the consistency and the production will be there all year. Yeah, Erickson Waddle's uh, rest of season wide receiver 14 right now. Is that too high, too low, just right? Are you buying, selling, or holding? I think that's just right. I have him at wide receiver 15, so he's like on that fringe. Again, you got to consider, you know, the lack of production, but also considering his elite upside. And, you know, he's he's going to have a 200-yard game at some point. Like, it's, it's going to happen. So if you're going to sell, you want to sell after he has a monster game. You know, they're playing the Giants on a short week, so it could be as soon as week five that we see Waddle absolutely explode in this offense. And, again, despite the lack of production, he's still been super efficient. 15th in yards per route run this season. So, like... It's not like Waddle's, oh, he sucks. It's like, no, like just the targets in certain matchups just haven't aligned for him. We've seen, obviously, the running backs have big games. We've seen Tyreek Hill have big games. And Waddle missed a week. So I, I think that he's a supreme buy low candidate. Any of these receivers that are coming off these boom games that are really more like wide receiver twos in my eyes, those are the guys you want to trade to get Waddle. Because Waddle actually has a wide receiver one ceiling. He's done it twice already in his NFL career as a rookie and as a second year player. Like he's a wide receiver one in fantasy football. And if you can get that for anything less of a guy that's like a DJ Moore, McLaurin, like those types of wide receiver twos that are kind of sometimes more consistent, or either packaging those types of players to get a guy like Waddle, that's the move that I would definitely want to try to make. Let's talk about some one on one trades here that people might be looking at. These are all amongst the wide receivers. Bill and people can, of course, go to the fantasy pros. Who should I trade tool online and kind of go through this themselves and play around with different iterations of various trades? These are all just going to be one on ones. So, Bill, would you trade Jalen Waddle for Brandon Ayuk? Maybe. Uh, Ayuk has what, 17 catches in three games, over 125 yards, and two of them he missed one game. Very efficient offense. You, you like what Brock Purdy's doing under center. Debo Samuel a little bit banged up. We saw Ayuk go off. Haven't really seen a whole lot of George Kittle. It, it seems like Ayuk is the top target for, for Brock Purdy. Take out Christian McCaffrey. But I, I don't know. It kind of just feels like you're you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like, it's just <laughs> an even swap for me. How about uh, Jalen Waddle or DK Metcalf? No, I'd, I'd rather have Waddle. I'm not a... Uh, I'm not. A, I like DJ, DK Metcalf as a player. I'm not necessarily a big fan of his in fantasy. To me, he has he's like a roller coaster. Kind of reminds me of uh, like Deshaun Jackson, where he has these monster blow up games, and then he kind of disappears for a couple of weeks. I'm not a huge fan of Geno Smith, even though he's proved me wrong now for I guess you know going back to last season, 18 games, 19 games, whatever it is. So I, I'd, I'd rather have Waddle. And lastly, Jalen Waddle, would you trade him for Devontae Smith? This is kind of like the same thing with Brandon Ayuk. I, I just, I, you're taking money from your right pocket and you're putting it in your left pocket. It's just an e even swap for me. Love the Eagles offense. Love Jalen Hurts. Very similar to Miami, right? They spread the ball around, very efficient, move the ball down the field. I, I, I don't think there's much of a gain there by getting Devonta Smith. And I don't think there's much of a loss if you, if you lost Waddle and, and got Smith either. 
Erickson, these guys are, you know, roughly in line with each other in the rest of the season ECR rankings. They might actually even be back to back to back to back. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that's been updated or not. But would you trade Waddle for any of those three? Brandon Ayuk, DK Metcalf, Devontae Smith, Erickson? Yeah, I think that the Smith one is like dead even. I know I have them ranked back to back. They're both wide receiver, the number two receivers on high powered offenses. So expecting it's really just trying to play like if you think Waddle's going to have a ma- major game this week then you should trade one of these guys. Like, again, it's an even move, but if you could see Waddle having a monster game against the Giants, then this is the week to trade for him because then he's going to have more value than a Devontae Smith because we know how this works with receivers. Like, whoever has the big game is going to have the more more value the next week versus the guy that has the down game because, oh, it was an A.J. Brown week. So the fact that Metcalf's on a bye week, okay, yeah, get Waddle now because Metcalf's value is not going to change over the bye week. And also you gaining uh, another week of a player with Jalen Waddle. So I think that moving him for Metcalf makes a lot of sense. The only guy I would much rather is actually Ayuk. Like what I've seen from Ayuk through his two healthy games, this dude is unstoppable. Like when they're moving down the field, it's always Brandon Ayuk. Despite the fact that he's missed a game and was hurt for another game, like he's still the leader in air yards on the 49ers. Whenever they're trying to push the ball downfield, which they just didn't do enough with Jimmy Garoppolo, it's always Brandon Ayuk getting those targets. And I always have concerns about Debo Samuel's health long-term George Kittle's health long-term and when any, one of those guys is banged up Ayuk absolutely just goes off so Ayuk is the only guy I feel the most confident that I would move Waddle for whereas Metcalf and Smith are definitely more lateral moves where you're trying to be strategic based on all right I think Waddle's gonna have the big week this week so I should trade for him but then it's like after that it's probably end up going to be end up being a wash when we look up at the final standings Let's move to the second most traded wide receiver, a guy that was, depending on when you drafted, probably going in the third round of a lot of leagues, but second round in some, not quite as high as Jalen Waddle, and that's Calvin Ridley. And Bill, I'll start with you again. Calvin Ridley, are you buying, selling, or holding after an amazing week one and then some quiet weeks since? I'm holding if I have them. I'm buying if I don't. Um, The two targets was concerning in week four. Luckily, one of them was for a touchdown. 11% 11% drop rate, that's concerning. Uh, I think the Jaguars, and I think the expectation is the Jaguars turn things around. They haven't looked good in, in the first three weeks of the season. They maybe looked a little bit better against the Falcons, but in terms of what Ridley has been doing, he has a better air yard share than Jamar Chase, Puka Nakua, Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins, C.D. Lamb. Not much better, slightly better, um, but still better. So uh, if I have Calvin Ridley on my team, I'm not getting concerned that he only had two catches. Uh, and if someone in your league has Calvin Ridley and they are concerned about the the the, the two targets this past week, then I'd, I'd be banging on their door trying to get it, trying to acquire him for my team. Erickson, Calvin Ridley had more catches in week one than weeks two through four combined. How much does that concern you? Are you buying, selling, or holding? He's probably a holder or buy for me similar to what bill had said just because look he still has a lot of value because of that week one game so i I think that you can still get you know he still has that value as part of his name cachet so i don't think it's like you should panic sell on calvin really because people are kind of starting to get concerned about him but he's still seeing a lot of red zone targets in the offense and we're going to see the Jaguars offensive line get back one of their tackles from suspension. So I think that's going to help the offense just generate more points. They're playing the Bills this week. Like they're going to have to throw the football. Like the Bills offense is coming in. They're going to put points against the Jaguars. So it's like, do you really want to trade him before like a shootout for the, with, before the Buffalo Bills that don't have Tredavious White? Like that, that to me doesn't sound like a very good strategy. So again, I, I think that you're waiting for that big game and then maybe you sell high off that because Ridley has shown inconsistencies in his game coming back for so much time off. So I don't think that's going to go away. Like, I don't think we're going to be Calvin Ridley's going to be a wide receiver one this year. Like, I think that he's going to go and finish in that wide receiver, mid wide receiver two range, kind of like where he was drafted before he got the hype got out of control. And he started going in the second round um, because there's a lot of mouths to feed in Jaguars in the Jaguars offense. Like that's point blank. That's a fact. Trevor Lawrence is spreading the ball around. And I don't think that's going to stop, especially with Zay Jones coming back to the offense, presumably this week as well. So again, with these receivers that are in crowded offenses, the move is, you sell high after the big game. Like that's the move to make to get the most value for the player. Not, okay, he's been struggling. Now I should get rid of him. That's not the move. Cause he's going to have big weeks. He's seen too much opportunity like Bill alluded to in this offense to sell low on Calvin Ridley, um, especially ahead of a shootout with the Bills. 
So I've got some names here for potential trades. And based on the way we've talked about some of these guys already, I think I kind of know where you're going. The first guy I wrote down is, is Calvin Ridley. Would you trade him for Brandon Ayuk? And the way you talked about him in that first segment, Erickson, I, I, you're higher on him than I expected. That seems like a definite yes, correct? Yep. Yeah, I'd rather have Ayuk. How about Calvin Ridley for Puka Nakua? I would also have Puka for me. And then Calvin Ridley or the other guy we talked about in the most traded segment, Jalen Waddell. I got Jalen Waddle one spot ahead of Calvin Ridley. So for me, again, I still like Calvin Ridley as a buy target, but if it's those guys that I can get for him, because again, with players that are moving, it's always worth just like, hey, like send out a trade offer. See what the market in your specific league is like viewing this particular player. Um, but based on the guys that you offered, Ayuk, Nakua, and Waddle, I like all those guys better than Calvin Ridley. So I would take any of those um, over the Jaguars wide receiver. What do you think, Bill? Would you trade Calvin Ridley for any of Brandon Ayuk, Puka Nakua, or Jalen Waddle? Um, I'd rather have Ridley over Nakua. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a wash between him and Waddle. Uh, I'd rather have Ayuk over, over, over Ridley. We talked a little bit, um, you know, uh, before the show, just about like Puka, like what will this offense look like if, and when Cooper cup returns, are you maybe fading the hype on Puka a bit bill, or you just think that's, you know, Calvin Ridley's that good. Uh, I'm not necessarily fading uh, Puka Nakua at all. I love what he's done so far. It's it's historic, right? Uh, broke a lot of uh, Anquan Boland's rookie reception records and, and yardage records. So uh, really exciting to see. As fantasy players, we love when these fresh new guys come on the scene. And and if you have them or you pick them up, it's, it's very, very exciting. I do have some concerns about what's going to happen. More of intrigue than concerns. I, I'm interested to see what happens when Cooper Cup returns. Is he going to be that same Cooper Cup that we saw two years ago? Probably not. Is he going to impact how many targets Nakua has been getting? Of course he is. When you have a guy like Cooper Cup back on the field, Matthew Stafford is going to start passing him the football. Uh, so not necessarily fading Nakua by any means. I do like the upside of Calvin Ridley in Trevor Lawrence's offense, playing in the AFC South where defenses tends to be optional. So uh, I, I, Calvin Ridley, and not, I'm not that concerned over this uh, this two target game. I think more week one type performances are in the future than this week four performance for for Ridley. We've got a new segment on the show today. It's the Uber Eats player we'd give up almost, almost anything for. This week, that player is Bill's buy low wide receiver, who is Chris Alave. So, Bill, what makes Alave such a great buy low candidate? You know, recency bias is a real thing for fantasy football players. And, and they see that they just got one point from Chris Olave. They spend a second round pick on him, maybe a third round pick. Uh, they're probably very frustrated. Derek Carr entered the game uh, with a banged up, uh, you know, a shoulder sprain. So you find out what that guy needs or, or that gal needs in your league. And, and you try to offer anything possible to get Chris Olave because the first two weeks of the season, double digit target. I'm oh, sorry. First three weeks of the season, double-digit targets. Two or three games, over 100 yards. Two or three games, uh, eight catches. He's got 42% of the team's air yards. They're not on a bye until week 11. And this schedule is nothing but cupcakes for the next few weeks. Three weeks in a row against the AFC South. And then he takes on the Bears and the Vikings. Now is the time to get Chris Olave because for the next five weeks, he is going to be a top 10 wide receiver. No doubt about it. Yeah, Erickson, I can't buy low on Olave because I pretty much have him in all my rosters already. <laughs> there weren't many people who were more excited about him as a second round pick than I was going into this year. You were one of the people who was fading him a bit uh, in large part because of Derek Carr. So are you with Bill that he is still a buy low coming off this poor game or is the kind of poor state of affairs in the New Orleans offense enough to keep you from going out and buying Olave? It's not enough to keep me away from buying him again. I, I will it'd be interested in any player at, at if the price is right. You know, again, you're buying Olave's talent, which I don't think was ever, you know, used against him, especially when he was being drafted in the second round. Like that was a reason to draft him that high. But I was skeptical about how good Derek Carr was. And we saw Derek Carr through four weeks, man. Like he misses Olave constantly downfield. Like it's not, you know, that connection has not been there. So will that change? Again, the more deep balls you throw, the more like you're just going to convert. So again, regression is going to kick in, especially for Olave, who's a talented guy. And, you know, so especially with the given matchups coming up, 
he is a sharp buy low player, especially now if the price is suppressed because, you know, he's wide receiver 30 in points per game through four weeks. You know, Garrett Wilson has more points than Olave does. And Garrett Wilson has the worst quarterback situation you could ask for, whereas we view Derek Carr as a consensus, as an upgrade from Andy Dalton, which has not been the case, at least in my opinion, from what we've seen so far from Olave. But again, worst case scenario, Olave is not going to necessarily kill you. You He's still a very good player. So I think just based on the fact that he had, I think, over 150 air yards last week, it's like, it's the buy low air, air yards model. Like you just go after guys like that, especially against the Patriots who are down so many different cornerbacks in their back, in their uh, defensive backfield. Um, Olave's going to probably have a big game. Chris Olave, the Uber Eats player we'd give up almost, almost anything for. Get food from your favorite restaurants, plus groceries and other essentials delivered straight to your front door with Uber Eats. This football season, stay planted right on your couch and get anything. Well, almost, almost anything you need for game day by ordering on the Uber Eats app. Uber Eats, the official on-demand delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. Alcohol in select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Erickson, let's go to your buy low wide receiver here. Yeah, so for me, it's going to be Amari Cooper. Um, again, he had a really bad game with DTR at quarterback for the Browns. Deshaun Watson wasn't able to play. You know, he made the decision on his own saying he was medically cleared, but his shoulder couldn't go. So, I mean, whatever. That was his choice. And again, Cooper does this all the time, man. Like, he always has bad games where... You know, he's not a bad player. I think that he's actually kind of been underrated in terms of his overall production this year. He's sixth in air yard share. You know, him and Elijah Moore have really carved out the top target share whenever Deshaun Watson has been under center. Again, Watson has been underwhelming as a passer, but uh, Mari Cooper has shown that even with Watson struggling through the first couple weeks of the year, like he was still productive. Like Cooper is just one of these boring players that not a lot of people want. It's like, oh, he's a bust. He sucks. But like, when he has big games, he has big games. Like, I've been crushed enough times by Mari Cooper in the fantasy playoffs to, to make sure I was like, you know what? I'm going to have him on my roster this year. So when he puts up the 50 burger in the playoffs, it's for me, not against me. So I think Amari Cooper, especially on the bye week, coming off a bad game, I think you can just get him for such a discount when his usage and just the player itself, like, he's just undervalued overall, usually in fantasy football. So I think that he's a sharp buy low player. Yeah, Bill, uh, Erickson just mentioned it. I was going to say, like, if you are interested in buying low on Amari Cooper, now's the time because he's on buy and his owner or his manager can't use him right now. So what do you think about Cooper? I think as long as Deshaun Watson is under center, Amari Cooper can remain a, a, a solid run, a wide receiver too. 41% uh, air yard share while Watson's under center. You throw out week four. It wasn't the starting quarterback. You just you totally re- erase that performance from your memory uh, you factor in now that he's on the buy, like Andrew said, this is a great opportunity to go out and get one of the NFL's most productive receivers year in and year out. I don't know why fantasy players knock him so much. Um, I think he had like a couple years where he was just injured a lot and that left a, a bad taste in some people's mouths and they just never got the mouthwash out to, to, to rinse out that, that gross feeling. But Amari Cooper, since he's been joining the, since he's been on the Browns, has been very, very productive. We saw it last year, and I think we'll see more to come of that really consistent productivity from from Cooper for the rest of this year, as long as Watson's healthy. Yeah, Cooper, so, I mean, even if he's not maybe consistent game to game, no receiver really is. The year to year, if you look at his finishes just in half PPR, it's only has he been worse than 19th twice uh, in his entire career going back to 2015 so he's just every year he's finishing in that that teens range or higher uh bill let's stick with you as we move to our sell high wide receivers give me your top guy here uh corlin sutton to me is a perfect candidate for sell high because he has some inflated numbers thanks to three touchdowns in four games i i don't think that's very sustainable he only has one game of over 70 yards four targets in, in just two games this year uh, the, the Broncos are removed the fact that their defense is terrible and their offense is shaky at times. Uh, they play the Jets and the Chiefs twice in the next four weeks. So if you're going to sell Cortland Sutton, I don't know why you'd want to hold on to him, knowing that the schedule is going to get a lot tougher and those touchdowns, it's just not sustainable for him to be scoring this much. Look for Jerry Judy, Marvin Mims to get some more action, especially in the end zone. Uh, I'd be selling high on Cortland Sutton. 
Erickson, we're not legally allowed to discuss Cortland Sutton without asking you about him, considering how high you were a year ago. Uh, and you weren't high this year, to be fair. But uh, what do you make of what we've seen out of Sutton so far? He's been the red zone target for Russell Wilson, but like Bill mentioned, some tough matchups coming up. Yeah, I think that the touchdowns just aren't going to be there for him, and that's really been what's made him productive. I mean, he has more touchdowns already this year than he had all of last year. Yeah. It's, it's like it's probably not going to sustain in the long term, especially as Judy gets back to full health like he's still coming back from his injury i mean maybe they'll play marvin mims more uh, who knows but i mean marvin mims his increase in snaps which i think eventually will happen you know even if someone has to like lock sean payton in a room and just watch marvin mims them to where like dude just play this guy more uh i i think that sudden is probably the guy you want to sell off of and judy and mims are probably players that you could probably get for a lot cheaper um, with Sutton kind of just looking like the number one receiver when I don't think it's by that much of a margin. My kingdom for more snaps for Marvin Mims. I, don't, I have no <laughs> idea. He traded up for the guy. He's looked awesome, you know, in a very light <laughs> workload. Let's get him on the field more. Erickson, uh, your sell high wide receiver a week ago was Christian Kirk, and your sell high wide receiver today is Christian Kirk. Yep, and it's because Zay Jones is going to be coming back to this offense soon. So we've seen Christian Kirk really boom in production over the last couple of weeks without Zay Jones in the lineup. But really it's been kind of a lot of empty calorie targets and volume. Like he hasn't been super efficient with the volume that he's been getting. He's been racking up receptions, but he has one red zone target this season. One. Like that was why Kirk was good last year because he was Trevor Lawrence's go-to guy in the red zone. Calvin Ridley has more red zone targets than he does. Uh, Zay Jones has more red zone targets than Christian Kirk does. Zay Jones hasn't played the last two weeks and he has more red zone targets than Christian Kirk. So for me, Christian Kirk is wide receiver 31 in points per game and expected points per game this season. You're going to get more than wide receiver 31 value for him on the market right now in the trade market, depending on how many targets he's gotten the last couple of weeks, how much better he's been because since Calvin Ridley has kind of seen his production dip, like if you could probably get Kirk for Ridley straight up. And I would just rather have Ridley rest of season just because I think he has a higher ceiling than Christian Kirk, who we kind of know as a wide receiver too. Like that's kind of what his MO is as a player that's been in the league for many years up to this point. So I think right now is the perfect time to sell out on Christian Kirk. I think you can get a wide receiver two locked and loaded or package him up to get a potential wide receiver one, like a Waddle with another player, because I think that he's really more of going to be a wide receiver three when the dust settles. And I think you can get wide receiver two value for him. Did, did I hear, did you say you think you can trade Kirk for Ridley straight up? Did I mishear I mean, you? Who's I, been better? I mean, that's what I thought. I mean, like, I mean, Kirk, why, Kirk has been better, you? but if you look at like the expert rankings for whatever they're worth, you know, rest of season, Ridley is still like like several spots higher. Ridley is, I think, 16th, well, and Kirk's like 31st. I mean, but Kirk has outscored him in three straight games. Like, it just, it, does no one care about? Like, Ridley had one good game this year. Like, it's like, and then we're just like, are we just that anchor bias towards that one game? I, I don't know. Like, Kirk has been better for three straight weeks. Like, don't people look at box score? <laughs> or I guess not. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, maybe. I mean, so if you if you think you can make that trade, I would certainly recommend that you, that you go out and do I, but, it. But I mean, like, am I like out of my mind? Like, again, I would rather have the Ridley side, so that's the side I set, settle on. But yeah. the last three weeks, it's not even been close. Like, who's been the better receiver or productive receiver? It's been Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk had what? How many targets did Christian Kirk have last week? So he had twelve like, targets. Calvin Ridley really yeah. had two. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But that's what I would do. I would try it, at least. <laughs> it's it, hey, you miss out on a hundred percent of the trades you don't send. So I exactly. I, I would try it at least. Uh, Bill, what do you think about Christian Kirk uh, in, in his role in this offense? I I, I was kind of surprised to see Cr Zay Jones's ADP in the summer so far below Christian Kirk's because every report out of Jacksonville was that Kirk was really going to be the third option. Zay Jones and Calvin Ridley were going to be the number one and number one, number two, number one and number two wide receivers in this offense, but the ADPs didn't match up. So I have a lot of shares of Zay Jones just based on the fact that he was going to be the, the presumptive starter. And we, we saw that in week one, his injury is a little concerning because he got injured in week two, came back in the game, played, and then missed the next two games anyway. So something might be going on there that maybe the public uh, is, is not aware of yet. Christian Kirk looks good when he gets the ball. Uh, he certainly, like Andrew said, he's, he's outplaying Calvin Ridley right now. Uh, but I think once Zay Jones comes back, I, I think that will do some damage to how much action Kirk can really get. And especially with the Jaguars, if you notice how they're using their running backs out of the backfield, they're getting a lot of targets too. 
Uh, Evan Ingram is still a thing in this offense. So it might be one of those situations where there's just not a lot of ball, not enough uh, passes to go around for Kirk to continue to put up this kind of pace. Let's wrap up with some listener questions from Twitter. First question here from coming from Big A. Is Stroud a rest of season play over Trevor Lawrence even? Erickson, what do you think? I think he is. Look, Trevor Lawrence, to me, I always thought, I thought he was overvalued in fantasy drafts this year because he had never shown a 20-point per game ceiling at the NFL level. You know who scored 20 points in three straight games? CJ Stroud. Like, yeah, Stroud, as a rookie, what he's done so far, yeah, we talked about in the one of our running back shows where we really like this Texans offense to improve and get better as the season progresses, as the offensive line gets healthier. Not to knock on Trevor Lawrence that he can't improve as well, but the CJ Stroud as a rookie, like he's surging right now. And his, I love the weapons they have in this offense. I love what Bobby Slovic is doing, you know, former PFF guy, 49ers guy, like that marriage is working so well for Stroud in this offense that, yeah, if I had to make a call right now, I can only have one quarterback for this season. I would, I would take Stroud. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much impossible to be like if you're a Texans fan, I can't imagine feeling better than you do right now, given what you've seen out of D'Amico Ryans, what you've seen out of Stroud and Bobby Slug. I mean, it, it's just all coalesced so beautifully, honestly. Uh, Bill, what do you think? Stroud over Lawrence rest of the season. If you look at the expert consensus rankings, Lawrence is still QB 10 rest of the season. Stroud's down at 13, but they're trending in the wrong direction or different directions, I should say. I think anyone with both of these guys on their fantasy team is probably comfortable with the idea of streaming the quarterback, right? Using the matchup base, using performance base, and and going with one of the options. Both of them, I think, are very safe. Stroud had three great games so far, maybe four and a half, three and a half games, uh, that, that he really wowed a lot of people, right? Uh, fantasy managers quickly picked up on that, added them to their roster. You were probably disappointed with some of Trevor Lawrence's outings. If you have them both, I would use them based on the matchup. Uh, but Stroud certainly looks like he's going to be the one to outperform based on what he's done so far. And the Houston Texans might end up winning the AFC South. That might be a future bet that people want to take advantage of because the Colts, they look okay. The Titans, they don't look that good. The Jaguars, they don't look that good. This AFC South to me is wide open. CJ Stroud certainly has a candidate uh, as as rookie of the year and, and has the Texans after a month of action in position to win the AFC South. I didn't have the stones to pull the trigger, but I looked long and hard at the Texans in you know August as a futures yeah. bet in that division because to me the the Jags were the only clear favorite. I thought any of the other three could have been there, and I just was a huge Stroud fan. And I wish I had you know more conviction in myself to uh, to have actually you know made that bet beforehand because I'm sure the odds aren't as good now. But yeah, he he looks awesome, and we talked about it earlier. Even in that game against the Ravens, it wasn't a good fantasy day in Week One, but like he looked like he belonged against a defense that usually makes rookie quarterbacks look like they don't belong. Obviously, there's four rounds difference between Stroud and DTR, but you kind of saw that in DTR's first game just this last week. So um, yeah, I just. Super, super impressed with Stroud from from every every direction. Uh, the plus, other question we had, five, go ahead. Plus five hundred, plus a five hundred to win the AFC South. That number came down a little bit, but still, I still like really that. good ROI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just st- I'm just staring at my Titans future to win that division. I can cash out for like a dollar profit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like it's teasing me. It's like, do you want to cash out now? It's like, well. Maybe I don't, I don't it, know. I, yeah, we, we, la- we laugh the at the we laugh at the AFC South, you know, every year. But like, that's going to be a fun race, I think, all season yeah. long. I mean, th- you can make a case uh, for any team, really. Vrabel I mean, with the not coaching. Not just this season, though. Like, all I mean, they have two rookie quarterbacks who look good. Trevor Lawrence is there, and then whatever the Titans decide to do with their quarterback next year, it should be a fun division for years to come. Yeah, it's a weird, weird sentence to say. Um, the other question I want to get to here is from Simon. Full PPR, he receives Dallas Goddard and Jameer Gibbs. He gives up TJ Hawkinson and Devon Aching. He has a one and three record. So I will just say, to me, I would not make this trade. I would rather have Achan and Hawkinson over Gibbs and Goddard, especially from what we've seen this year. But I do get the the sentiment of, I have a one and three record. I want to shake things up. But to me, this is a no-go. Bill, what do you think? No, Simon says decline that trade. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I, I, I don't know if I need to further yeah. pontificate on why that. Well, I, I, I get the idea of like PPR. Oh, Jameer Gibbs, he was supposed to be this PPR monster. But we, we talked about it in the running back show. Like it's David Montgomery's backfield right now. So I, yeah. I get it. Hawkinson's better than Goddard and A-Chan's better, better than Gibbs. <laughs> yeah. that, to me, that's – unless we have it reversed where he's getting those guys – but whoever has Hawkinson and HN, the, that's who's winning that trade. Yeah, the, the way the tweet was phrased, you know, when they sent it in was that they would be giving up Hawkinson and HN. So, yeah, yeah no. Erickson, is this a clean sweep? To me, that's a total no-go. Yeah, I don't – I mean, I'd rather have – yeah, I'd rather have Hawkinson than Goddard. I'd rather have HN than Gibbs. So I'm yeah. trying to figure out where this person is, like, eyeing that they're getting some value here. Again, maybe if they either – if Dallas Goddard was Travis Kelsey – or Gibbs was Travis Etienne. Like, okay, like I understand where you're trying to make like the improvement, but it seems like you're just getting worse <laughs> at running back and tight end. Like, I know you want to shake things up, but maybe you package those players for one stud player. Maybe it's like Hawkinson at Chan for Tyree Kill or like something like along those lines. I think that's kind of a move you should probably try to alter it as opposed to this deal. You know, when you're one and three and you're at the bottom of the standings after the first month, sometimes logic and, and rational thinking <laughs> It, it is clapping, you know, that doesn't necessarily enter the brain <laughs> yeah. focus. So, uh, Simon, uh, I, I would say just, you know, you have two very exciting players right now. Maybe you do what Andrew said and, and package them together and try to get an upgrade. Yeah, I, I, I want to say that, like, I didn't include this question because I thought it was difficult. I included this question because I wanted us to answer it so Simon doesn't make this deal. And we want to <laughs> save him from himself. Uh, that'll do it for us here today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. For Erickson and for Bill, I am Ryan Warmly. We'll see you guys again next time.